Hey y'all, I have about $30 to spend this week. I'm gonna pick up a few groceries from Aldi and then make several meals, including a couple of breakfasts and a few dinner ideas. Now this could work great for a single person who's on a budget or a family that needs a few ideas for dinners and breakfast during the week. So let's get started. Here is my list. It's not a very large list. I don't have a ton to pick up, but the first thing I wanna get is eggs. And eggs were $3.88 today. Super pricey, but I had to get one dozen, so that's the first thing I got. Next, I checked for some mozzarella cheese. The shredded cheese was $2.35 for a small bag, and for a larger bag, it was $3.95. I ended up finding a block of cheese for one pound for $3.79 at my Aldi, so I picked up one of those. Next, I needed two jars of pasta sauce. Now, they have this traditional sauce for $1.65, so I just got two of those. Next, a couple of avocados were on my list. They weren't quite ripe enough yet, but I did pick up three and just let them ripen on the counter. Now, I was just going to get a small can of enchilada sauce, but I ended up getting the larger can instead for $2.39 and just ended up freezing half of it. So if you want to do that, that's definitely an option. Next, I needed a container of lasagna noodles. They only had these oven-ready lasagna noodles, but I'm going to make them work. But if you can find the regular ones, that's fine too. Then some Parmesan cheese. You can get any Parmesan you like for this meal plan. Then I just ended up getting a bag of onions because it ends up being a little bit cheaper. I only ended up using a couple of onions for this plan so just keep that in mind next i needed some fresh spinach this bag was only a dollar 39 for 10 ounces next was cream cheese and they have it at aldi for a dollar 65 they did not have cottage cheese for 359 so i did have to go to vons and find it for 399 there but you can find this at walmart of course then i just needed one can of black beans for 85 cents and i used a little bit of flour but if you don't have any you can pick some up i had some in my pantry so i didn't end up getting any during my shopping trip. Then I found some tofu for $1.29. This is the extra firm tofu, got one of those. Then I picked up a pound of this ground pork sausage. You can use any sausage that you like though. This was $2.29 for that. Then I did need a pound of butter, but if you already have butter on hand, you don't need to buy it. You can just use what you have. I'm not using a ton. And I'm always writing down everything, of course, as I go to make sure I'm not surprised when I get to check out and this is everything. This first recipe is really fun and fast. And if you have kids, it would be great to make this with them too. These are going to be cottage cheese bagels. First, I'm just getting a little bit of the moisture out of the cottage cheese. I use the whole fat cottage cheese, so there really wasn't a ton of moisture, so you don't really need to strain it. But if you notice that yours has a little bit of extra moisture, just go ahead and strain it out. Then I'm measuring some flour out with a scale because I find that to be more accurate. I'm just going to measure out about five ounces or so, which is just about a cup of unpacked flour. I always just scoop it in and level it off. Then I'm using two teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, and mixing that all together and then adding my cottage cheese in. Now I'm just going to give this a stir until it's sort of combined and looks like little, you know, pieces of sand or so. Then I'll get my hands in there and really get it all combined because this is going to help get the dough completely turned into a dough ball. You've got to get your hands dirty in this one. So just get that nice and brought together and combined until all all of that flour is into the mixture. Now, if it seems a little bit wet, you can add a little bit more flour, just a little bit at a time. And of course, if it's a little bit dry, then you can add a tiny bit of water, about a tablespoon at a time, until it forms a dough ball like this. You'll notice that it might be a little bit tacky, but it shouldn't stick to your hands or the bowl. Then we're just gonna set that on a clean counter and cut that into four pieces. I like using a bench scraper for this, but you can just use a knife. Then I'm just gonna form each one into a ball flatten it a little bit and then poke my thumb through to make that hole in the middle. You can definitely roll these out into ropes and then connect the ends. I just find this method a whole lot easier and it just sticks together better in the oven. You're just going to want to make sure you stretch out that hole so it doesn't close up completely when you bake it. You may have seen me do this too with my Greek yogurt bagels. That's another recipe too so if you don't love cottage cheese you can actually make bagels with Greek yogurt and flour too. So I do have that recipe on my blog if you want to check that out. Also in another video I'll put here too. But these ended up being so delicious. The extra salt from the cottage cheese just added that beautiful flavor. And these really turned out to be like cheesy bagels. Both my picky eaters absolutely loved these. And I think this would be super fun to add any toppings that you want. You can do cheese, everything, bagel seasoning, whatever you want. Then I put these on a baking tray and added some egg, just a beaten egg to make that egg wash to make it nice and shiny and chewy.
chewy and just bake those for about 25 minutes. Now, the thing with these bagels is you need to let them cool completely to finish cooking. It's gonna take about 25 minutes or so. Don't get excited like me and cut these straight out of the oven because you'll notice that they're not fully cooked through. You can see that you can see a little bit of the moisture there. So just try to be patient and wait about 25 minutes and they'll look much better after that. These are great though, toasted with a little bit of cream cheese, or you can level them up, scramble an egg like I use the rest of that egg wash. Nothing goes to waste. I just went ahead and scrambled that egg wash that I used and put that on top of my toasted bagel and put a little bit of spinach and some hot sauce and made a bagel breakfast sandwich. So this, this is one of those options for breakfast this week and it's super delicious. And you can make these in advance too and freeze them and just reheat in the microwave too. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and make some tortillas from scratch. Now this is an optional thing to do just to save a couple of dollars if you do have have the time to do it. I personally wouldn't say that this is a way to save a ton of money, but $2 is $2 and I do have the time and I've done this before and it's actually pretty quick. And I love the way that these homemade tortillas turn out. So this is totally optional though. If you really do not have the time, go ahead and spend the two or $3 to get 10 tortillas or eight tortillas, whatever you can find, because that's all we're gonna be using for this week. But it's really up to you. I like to make a bunch at once and then just, you know, know, freeze them or refrigerate them and use them for, you know, a few weeks. So in a bowl, I'm just mixing together flour, salt, olive oil, and water until it's completely combined. Then I turn it out on a floured surface. I'm just going to knead that until it comes together maybe 10 or 15 times or so until it's no longer super sticky. Then I'm just going to let that rest for about 10 minutes. And then I'm just going to use my bench scraper again to make it easier and just cut this into eight relatively equal pieces. Now I'm using a few of these tortillas for breakfast. So I want to make sure that they're larger because I'm going to be making something where I put all the ingredients in it. And then the rest of them don't have to be super large, maybe eight inches or so, because I'm using the rest in a casserole. So half of them, I want to make sure they're very, very big. Now here is a little tip. If you want to flatten them, put a piece of parchment that's floured on top of one of the balls and then use your cutting board to start the flattening process. And it's a beautiful six inch tortilla just like that, but I want mine to be somewhere between eight to 10 inches this week. So I'm just going to roll them out. I don't know why I'm using a tiny rolling pin. <laughs> this is just kind of hilarious. I do have a regular adult size rolling pin, so I don't know what's going on here. But I'm rolling them out until they're nice and thin. And the first one's going to be rustic, y'all. It's okay. They do not have to be perfectly round. They're going to be delicious, whether they're round or kind of wonky. That's fine. But as you go, you're going to notice that you can get them rounder and rounder and rounder. So don't get discouraged and they still taste delicious. So I'm just going to continue to roll these out and then just put them on a griddle without any kind of oil or butter. We're just putting them on a heated griddle and then just waiting for the bubbles to form. When those bubbles form, then we flip it, brown it on the other side for a minute or so, and then that's it and we're done. Now for the avocado, if you want to get this prepped in advance, you actually can. Definitely be careful removing the seed out of the avocado. I like this little tool. I'll have that listed in the description for you. It definitely is a lot safer to use. Now I'm going to put my in a mason jar here and then add a little bit of lemon juice. You don't need the lemon juice. The browning actually happens from the oxygen that hits the avocado. So we're just going to put some plastic wrap way down inside and try to make sure that there is no air anywhere on any of the avocado and then we'll seal it with the lid and this will be ready for a day or two so that way we don't have to always cut open an avocado or if the avocado is about to go bad you can definitely do this mash it up and keep it in the refrigerator for an extra day or two. And we're going to make a really fun viral recipe that I saw while thinking about this meal plan. And it's a breakfast tortilla fold over. I saw the idea on Natasha's kitchen, saw it on TikTok. So I thought, okay, I'm going to give this a try. I'm just going to cut a little slit in the tortilla and add cheese in the first quadrant, then eggs and spinach and then the avocado. Now you can definitely add anything that you want here, but this is what I'm trying for this first one with the ingredients we have on hand, and we're just gonna fold that over, and then we're just gonna put a little bit of butter in a pan, and then toast it, so that way it gets nice and toasty, and the cheese gets melty. And just make sure that that cheese is in that first quadrant there on the bottom left. That's gonna make a difference with how well this stays closed. And the next day, I actually tried making these again with a meatless sausage that I found 
at Trader Joe's a couple weeks before. And this is just to show you the different options. Depending on what you have on hand, you can make all kinds of different fun breakfasts with this. So if you don't love spinach or avocado in something like this, you can try it all kinds of different ways. Here's that avocado the next day. Just give it a little bit of a mix and you can see it's beautiful and ready to go. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make another one and show you what it looks like if I'm adding a different kind of ingredient. I see a lot of people using bacon for something like this. You could use tomatoes. You can really load it up with a lot of veggies, maybe some onions and bell peppers. Use whatever you have on hand that is left over. Any kind of cheese would work for this too. It's just a really fun way to mix things up for breakfast and just keep things interesting and fun and still stay on a really tight budget. So I love this breakfast idea. This first dinner idea is a freezer meal that I made once when I was getting ready to have kids. And I've made this a couple times since then, but this time instead of using ricotta, I'm using cottage cheese. And these are pretty interchangeable. So if you'd rather have ricotta, you can definitely do that instead. But we are making lasagna roll-ups. So first to a bowl, I'm just gonna add the cottage cheese, one egg, Parmesan cheese, parsley, salt, and pepper. And I'm just gonna mix that together until it's completely combined. And in the meantime, I'm also going to start boiling my water and salt the water because I'm gonna go ahead and cook my oven ready noodles. I'm just gonna par cook them and I'll show you how I do that here in just a minute. But in the meantime, I just wanna get everything set up so it's easy once I'm rolling everything up. So I'm gonna add a few tablespoons of pasta sauce to the bottom of a casserole dish. And if you're cooking this for a single person, I recommend maybe using a small individual glass dish or even one of these foil loaf pans. These will work great for individual dishes like this where you're making like a casserole or a small lasagna or something like that. This is great for a single person. You can make it into two portions if you like using that, whatever works for you. So now again, with the boiling water, I'm just adding my oven ready noodles. Now you can use oven ready noodles just like regular noodles. They just don't necessarily take as long to cook. I found that to get them really nice and flexible for roll-ups, it took about six minutes, but you're gonna need to experiment with the ones that you have. Just make sure when you move them around, they're easily flexible like this, like I'm showing you here. And that way, when you get them out to fill them, they will roll without breaking. And if you're gonna use this as a free freezer meal too. You don't want your noodles to be overcooked. You want to make sure they're just pliable and easy to roll up. So now I'm adding that mixture a few tablespoons at a time because I didn't know how much I was going to need for each roll up. And I'm just going to start spreading it around all the way to the ends until it is completely covered in this mixture. Once all of the filling is down on the noodles, we'll start rolling things up. So I'm just going to roll them up. You can make them as tight as you like or just roll them in quarters. It really does not make a huge difference. But the big secret is to make sure that you put them the seam side down into the container. So just make sure the seam of the noodle is down on the bottom of the casserole dish. Then I'll cover the noodles with sauce and I'm going to try to cover them completely and not have any of the noodles showing. I did add more sauce later after I finished and add a little bit of mozzarella on top and then cover with foil. If you're gonna be using this as a freezer meal, you can freeze it just like that after you put the foil on and then cook it later on, but I have all the instructions for that in the blog post. Here I'm making a larger portion just to show you how this would be if you wanted to make it for a family. And again, cover completely with the sauce. You don't wanna see any of the noodles showing, especially because the noodles are not fully cooked yet. You wanna make sure there's enough moisture to make sure those noodles cook through and don't get dried out. Now add all the cheese on top and again, Again, I love these little Pyrex dishes for freezer meals so you can just cover it like that and freeze it and when it comes time to cook you'll cover it with foil and then just bake that for about 45 minutes or until it's all nice and cooked through that cheese is melty the noodles are tender and these just end up being so delicious they're super fun too and you can add anything that you like to these you could do ground sausage or tofu or anything that you love and really make these your own I like to add a little bit of Parmesan cheese and serve it just like that this next recipe is one of my all time favorite comfort foods. We're making lasagna soup. And the first time I made this, I actually used impossible sausage, but this time I'm using regular sausage, but that's up to you. Both of them are awesome. Or you can do no meat at all and just add what you like. But first I'm going to saute some onions in oil until they're nice and soft and translucent. Then I'll add my sausage and I'll just brown that, breaking it apart as it cooks until that is completely cooked through. Now I just use a paper towel to get rid of some of this extra 
excess grease once it's done cooking. That's up to you. You can strain it out into a bowl. Just make sure that you're not pouring this grease down the drain because that can clog your sink. So I just don't recommend doing that. I love this little trick with the paper towel. It's a game changer for me. Once you've got all the grease removed, then we're going to add some chicken stock. I know we didn't pick up chicken stock, so I just added a little bit of chicken bouillon to some water, or you can use a little bit of soy sauce, about a tablespoon or two to make sort of easy chicken stock substitution, or you can use water, vegetable stock, whatever you have on hand is totally fine. Then we'll add that full jar of pasta sauce. Don't forget to add a little bit of water to the jar, put the lid back on, shake it up, and then get all the rest of that out of there because you want all of that flavor in this soup. So we'll empty that out into there, and then we're going to add a little bit of Italian seasoning. This is up to you. I like to use Mrs. Dash or just an Italian seasoning that doesn't have any added salt. But again, you can put anything that you like, basil, parsley, etc. Then we're just going to bring that to a boil. And don't cry, Italians. I know I'm breaking the noodles, but it is a must for this soup. We're going to break them into bite-sized pieces. And I'm going to go ahead and just cook these for about 12 minutes to get them fully cooked through. Follow the instructions on your package. If they're oven ready, cook them for about 10 to 12 minutes and then see if they're ready. If not, cook them a little bit longer. And then we're just going to add a little bit of cream cheese at the end. The cream cheese is optional, but it does make it really nice and creamy. I actually ended up making this as a fridge clean out meal once, so I only had two tablespoons of cream cheese on hand. So you can really add as much or as little or none. I just added a couple tablespoons following the same recipe that I've made before. And with cream cheese, you just want to make sure that you cut it into small pieces to make sure that it melts properly. Otherwise, you won't get any melted cream cheese. It'll just stay in a block for a long time. Then add some Parmesan cheese and stir until it's all melted and just completely cooked through and heated through. And that's it for this dish. It comes together really fast, actually, in about 30 or 45 minutes, a pretty fast one pot meal. So I highly recommend giving this one a try. And we actually served this one with a spinach salad that I also ended up making with the roll-ups as well. So let me just show you a really quick balsamic vinaigrette using things things from my pantry. I'm just going to use a quarter cup of vinegar, half a cup of oil, a little bit of honey, and some Dijon mustard, then some fresh cracked pepper and salt. That's it. Give it a shake and that's all. You can use any sort of dressing that you have on hand or just lemon juice, anything that you have on hand and just add some spinach. And if you have any cucumbers or tomatoes or any leftover veggies, even some chopped bell peppers, whatever you have on hand, just add those to the salad and then add the dressing. You can really make this super simple. You can have have the spinach just as is or you can wilt it in a pan and add just a little bit of oil and salt and pepper and just have a you know sauteed spinach salad that will work fine too but any way that you want to do this I highly recommend adding that as a side this last dinner idea is called sofritas tortilla casserole and it's really delicious and uses tofu if you are not sold on tofu yet give this one a try because it is a game changer and I have tried a lot of different ways with tofu so far and this one so far is my favorite so first I'm just going to start by draining out the liquid and then slicing my extra firm tofu into very thin pieces like this and then just place it on a towel lined cutting board and then top that with some more towels and a heavy cutting board or cast iron skillet just for about 10 to 15 minutes so that moisture kind of comes out in the meantime I'm going to dice my onion and then get my enchilada sauce ready again I am freezing half of this enchilada sauce for later just make sure that if you're freezing in a jar that you use the straight side jar and leave about an inch of headspace and don't put the lid on until it's frozen. So now you can see the tofu is relatively dry. We're going to add some oil. If you're using stainless steel, I want to give you some tips on this because a lot of people have asked me about sticking. Just make sure you heat your pan first, then add your fat like oil, and then reduce the heat to low, then add your food. So that's what we did here. And then I just browned everything for a good while. If it's still sticking, it means it's not ready to turn yet. So just wait a few more minutes and then it should naturally release from the pan when it's ready to flip. So we're just going to brown that tofu and then break it up into small pieces just like we would if it were sausage or beef or something like that. Just break it on up because we want bite-sized pieces. Then I'm just going to add a few tablespoons of the enchilada sauce to make it nice and roasty and get kind of that smoky flavor all throughout. And I'm just going to saute that again for a few minutes and add some seasonings because tofu does need a lot of flavor added in so you can do salt pepper chili powder cumin whatever you want the sky is the limit for this 
Then to my eight by 10 casserole dish or any size that you have, I'm just gonna add a couple tablespoons of enchilada sauce to the bottom. This is just to avoid sticking. Then I'm going to place a couple tortillas on the bottom and overlapping is fine. You can cut the tortillas if you want and line them however you please. It really doesn't make a huge difference. We're just gonna sort of layer this like a lasagna. And if you're making this for a single portion, again, you can use the loaf pans and just slice your tortillas in half so they fit a little bit better. It's really up to you how you wanna line that. Now we're going to add about a third of the enchilada sauce on top here and a third of the mozzarella cheese because we want to have enough for that top layer. So then we'll add two more tortillas and again overlapping is fine and just layer it again. So we'll add the rest of that tofu on top then half of the rest of the sauce and half of the rest of the cheese. I know it sounds kind of complicated. I always have to read the <laughs> instructions for lasagna like 500 times to see the amount exactly how much I have to save for the end. So I don't know if anybody else is like that. But then we're going to add the last tortilla on top. And I just ripped this into quarters so it would kind of fit a little bit better and cover the entire thing because I only had one tortilla left. Then I added the rest of that enchilada sauce to make sure that everything was fully covered. I wanted to make sure that none of the edges of the tortillas got dried out in this case. And you could use corn tortillas for this too. The recipe that I adapted this from used corn tortillas. So definitely just use what you love and what you have on hand for this. Don't worry too much. Then add the rest of that mozzarella cheese and you could do a freezer meal with this. Again, just cover it at this point, put it in your freezer, and then when you're ready to cook it, just thaw it out 24 hours in advance in your refrigerator. And when you're ready to bake it, you're just gonna cover it with foil, making sure it doesn't touch the cheese. And then we're just gonna bake that for about 25 minutes. Now with this casserole, I wanted to make an authentic Mexican black bean side dish. So I sauteed some onions in some oil until it was nice and soft and translucent, and then added that entire can of black beans undrained. Very important because we want the liquid. Then I added about a teaspoon of cumin and some salt and then just let that simmer away. And I'm just going to let this simmer for basically the entire time that the casserole has left in the oven. I'm just keeping an eye on it and stirring it throughout until it gets nice and thick. And here again, you can see that I did another smashed avocado the day before because it was about to go bad. So I just put it in here again with some lemon juice and smashed it and put that plastic wrap on top and you can see it's good as new. It's beautiful. I'm going to use that for this dish as well as a fresh avocado. That's up to you. Now with the last five minutes, if you want the cheese to be brown, you can take that foil back off and put it back in and you can see it gets nice and brown and a little bit crispy. Oh my goodness, this one is so, so delicious. You could serve this with a little bit of Greek yogurt on top with that fresh avocado or smashed avocado and those black beans, of course. I've got a ton of other meal plans and a lot of other recipes on this channel, including some tips and tricks for staying on a budget. So check out some of my other videos and have a wonderful day.